at the house, it's uh, very, it's very funny. You know, I don't know if, if you're aware about the incident we had here with the arm robbers. A, a couple, I don't know, almost like a year ago now. Almost a year ago now. So, you know, that's took a, it shocked some of the people who were living in the house, you know. So. Okay. Okay, so, you mentioned that people, we, we more or less celebrate what he stood for than celebrating his birthday. Hey. Would it be different as a family if the nation decides to celebrate him on his birthday as well? Well, you know, to think about, you know, there's so much celebration, you know, everybody's celebrating something. And I, I think that, you know, what I was trying to get at was, you know, after such, you know, huge you know, excitement for the June 12, the Democracy Day, and then, you know, the day he passed away as well, that was also like another, like a down point. For us, you know, and I, and I noticed that because if you see, like, the house is totally empty now, like, um, it's more like a way we just like take it all in for the family. I don't know how other Nigerians celebrate. I'm sure some other people, you know, take this up and do something a little bit more elaborate. But for us, it's just more of a time to just like, you know, reflect and just see, okay, Abdul, you know, okay, we've done this whole, this is like, it's like a cycle. And this ends the cycle. And we're now looking towards, okay, what do we do to like, you know, help his legacy? How do we promotes um, what he stood for, like you said, like you say. Okay, so he stood for um, free and fair elections, democracy. Do you think that as a country we've lived up to his expectations? You know, first of all, you have to understand that democracy is just not one, it's not a destination, it's a journey. So I believe that no matter how small, there has still been progress. And um, my, um, and I think what we should be focusing on more now is to get more people involved in the system so it becomes a little bit more inclusive in its um, in its uh, deliverance. You know, I think it's it's important that uh, we don't see, you know, like I, I'll take you back to 1993 when my father ran. I will tell you for a fact that he never believed that he would solve all Nigeria's problems. He probably he knew that Nigeria's problems would be solved by Nigerians themselves. So I think it's more important that the Nigerian people get, you know to participate in what we call democracy, no matter how flawed it may be. So I, might not, I will not tell you it's a perfect democracy because there's no such thing, but I'll tell you that the more we um, engage and we, and we um, interact and um, participate in this democracy, the better it's gonna become as we move along. Okay, so on a personal note, how do you feel that he's not here? He would have been 84 today. Yeah. How do you feel that he isn't here to see the man that you have become, the achievement of your siblings as well. How do you feel? I don't know. That, that will always be something really sad for me. You know, I don't know. You know, it's like uh, now I really, really, I don't know if, you, if you've gotten that for me, that I'm very passionate about Abiola and my father, you know. And, you know, everybody wonder, there's no reason, there's no funny reason. It's, it's my father. Like, everybody idolizes their father. So my father will always be perfect in my eyes. So for the fact that I'm not able to get some, some like, you know, salient advice mm -hmm. in situations that have come up in my life, you know, you know it's, it, it would always, it's something that just creeps up in the back of my head, like God knows where I would be today if my father was alive to give me this, um, the guidance and coaching that I, you know, that I would love, that I would have loved to have. But like, I always go back to say, that I still had my father for eight to nine years of my life, which was most, more than most. Some people never knew their parents. So sometimes, even when I feel sad or feel bad about it on my own, for myself being selfish, when I look at other people, I wonder like, wow, if I'm complaining, what would they be doing? So I thank God for the time I did spend with my father and I pray that Allah just continues to bless him. I think that's all we what can do. What do you think about his philanthropy? I thought it was that, that is exactly what I would um, I would I would expect. You know, they said to who much is given, much is expected, and you know, um, I believe that my father believed that he was a custodian for the wealth of Nigerians. So we have, you know, people who were probably richer than my father, or who probably had enough money, more money than my father, but maybe we're not putting it on paper because you know, there's something that is paper money, and then there's, there's your real net worth. So there were probably people who were richer who have not who did not take after his, um, after him and like donation and helping because I believe that once we all start taking 
um, possession of what was rightfully ours if we start owning owning our future by like investing in our own in our country and ourselves it won't be a better country um, I just want to say one more thing um, somebody said one time that um, there was never a plan for Africa that's why we are so confused you see we need to plan for ourselves nobody will plan for us and I think that's the most important thing so my father's philanthropy was a way of him planning for Nigeria and also probably trying to encourage his brothers and sisters who were wealthy at the same time to also do the same. Mm -hmm. I'm sure some, some of them are doing some, some of them are doing such. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. What are those things that come to mind? Wow. Well, you know, the funny thing is um, I was born into this house. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I think the first part we had was my naming ceremony. So I was born into this house. Um, it's home. I feel a connection to both my parents when I'm here. Mm -hmm. You know, it's um, it could be frightening because you know it just brings puts a lot on your shoulders. You know, when you see you know their grave and then you know that you know their life was not necessarily theirs; it was truncated in in a way. So it's hurtful, but it's also a reminder of what he stood for, what they both stood for, both my parents stood for. And it just encourages me to, to, to try to, f to see if there's, well, what can I do? So I wake up, I come out and I see this and I'm thinking, okay, what can I do today to, to live up to their expectations? So, you know, that's when I get into trouble because then I, I pledge and I, I ask, I, I give my word to people, not necessarily knowing how I'm going to help them, but I've, I always try my best to do what I can in, this, in the present situation. But yes, it's, um, it's a lot, but if you don't know where you're coming from, you'll never know where you're going. It's something that roots me to the, my home. I like to see it. I don't feel like any negative thing. I feel like, you know, when I get up and I go out there, it's like they're right behind me. So we're working to, we're all working in the same direction and that's most important. Is the achievement, put a, put a, is there a weight on all of it? No, I won't say it's a weight. You know, I think what most um, the um, the issue that we in the family we're just not talking with one another, and I think that's the most important thing. Communication is key in any kind of relationship you want to ever have, and I think that's the most important thing. But when we talk about um, how we can move forward, it's it's basically in front of us. Everybody, we all know what we just need to do is just sit down on the table and just hash it out. So I, I don't I don't think it's really. That it, like, like, I think what we don't understand is that we are stronger together. And it, I think that's also in Nigeria as well. Yeah. That what we in the Niger Abiola family don't understand is that the norm, the, just the knowledge alone in the Abiola family all over the world, if we were just able to just synergize that um, energy into a common effort, then we could even be way greater than the MQ Abiola that we, you know. So once we can do that, and, and Nigeria as a whole as well, if Nigeria themselves can just put away the petty differences like they did in 1993, come 2023, vote for a candidate that would actually galvanize everybody into like a common vision and a common goal, then I'm telling you the sky is the limit. Okay, so a lot of people use Abiola as a reference to do whatever they want to do. Do you think that this should cascade into probably a course of study in school? Yes, I, I believe just like with every with every one of our leaders who have been able to take over, who has been able to lead us in some form or shape, should be studied, and you know students should be able to uh, critique some of their movements. So like for instance, um, you know people come up today after me after I feel like they were the ones who truncated our democracy to to proffer solutions, and I wonder where is the basis for that? But I think it's because we don't study our past and we don't know what happened in the past. That's why we're making the same mistakes we are today. So mine is, yes, you can have your opinion, but we need to, we need that opinion prop, um, properly, like, you know, scrutinized, you know what I mean? Because we can't afford a, another 1993. And I think it's important that we understand that. Where Nigeria is today is different from where it was in 1993. Mm -hmm. We cannot afford another 1993. So what we need to do now is, you know, compose ourselves and just look forward. If the winner of the June 12, 1993 election was alive, he would have been 84 years old today. 
His compound is deserted as many who would have come to celebrate him are most likely using other means to do that. But the memory of what he stood for has remained in the minds of many, talking about the cause for free and fair elections amongst others.